So let's talk about data binding in WPF, right? Uh, if you have seen the data context video I've made, that kind of gives you an idea, but uh, let's take a closer look. So here I have a couple of simple classes. Um, student class has three properties, ID name, and the list of books. In the constructor, now let's take a look at the book class. We have an ID title. And inside the constructor of student class, um, initializing the property to a new list and adding a couple of books here. Pretty straightforward. Let's go back to our design surface, XAML. Here I have set the data context to student. And let's create a Let's add a stack panel. Let's get a background page. Let's get a font size. I can't give this font size to stack panel, can we? No. It doesn't have text property. So <clears throat> let's add a couple of text blocks. Increase the font size to something we can comfortably see. What is good? Now, it's time to bind these properties. I'd like to bind this first text box to the ID of the student and uh, the second one to the name of the student. Okay, so we're going to use the text property of text block and set it to a binding. As soon as we do that, eight nubs, we are data context student, so it's automatically binding to the class name fully qualified class name, which is the namespace plus the uh, class name. But I want to bind it to the ID property. And that's how you do it. Same thing here. Let's set the text to binding, open, close, curly braces, of course, and name. So that's how you deal with text block or text box or label. What if we have a list box? Let's create a list box. Let's increase the font size. So list box by default includes I think a text block. That's why uh, we can increase the font size. Um, it gives us a property of font size. Um, let's close this for now. Our list box has a property called item source. And anytime you want to bind to a collection, like this one here, this property, books collection, we need that item source. So item source, and we are going to set it to binding and books right here. So technically our binding is done, but as you can see it's binding to the fully qualified name again. The reason being because it has only one text block and we have two properties. It doesn't know which one it should bind. So to get to resolve that we're going to expand this list box and we're going to override the default template. So I'm going to say list box item template I'm going to need a data template open close inside data template 
go into a stack panel which is going to host our text blocks first text block here I don't have to increase the font size because I already set I mean unless you want it to make it different than what I set it already over here to 40 so I'm just gonna say text block I mean text property is bound to the ID property of the book and the second text block I'm going to bind this to the title property. Open, close, close the braces. Binding title. And let's close this. Now we have our binding complete. So run this. It's perfectly working. So we have two books in this list box. One is with ID 1, data binding in WPF, and the second one is data context in WPF. So we have two books. Okay. So that's how you bind to a list box. Now, if you have had only one string property for that book list, only one property. Uh, probably you don't need this property. Just go binding, and it will work. You need don't you you would only need one text block, and uh, that would take care of it. I actually didn't need this. Uh, probably didn't need this item template because default is only already has. Uh, it already has. Uh, one text block, so as soon as you set the data item source to books, it will take care of it. Uh, while we're here, I'd like to show you something cool. So let's say uh, you're designing your UI and you don't have this ID yet. Just for... Example, purpose of example was set to something that you don't have. and there is something called fallback value. This one, what it does is, if you can't find this value, it's going to assign this value we set over here. Let's just, I'm going to say it's not ready yet. Okay, so it's kind of placeholder. And uh, if you're working with, if you're just designing and your data is not ready, you want to find it later. That's how you can uh, put a placeholder here. Or you can say ID goes here. Something like that. So basically that's how you do binding in WPF. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Thank you.